Hello and greetings, fellow StarCrafters. PGO Milncraft here with game number two between the Blue Terran player, TSL Polt, who is also actually Polt Prime on the Team Prime, same as Marine King, for example. Up here in the top left corner, in the bottom left corner, we are going to see Maus Thorzane. I should actually, uh, just for a little bit, I, I do want to talk about uh, TSL. I actually feel really bad for TSL, which, by the way, TSL stands for Team SCV Life. As it seems like all these really, really good players that they get that go through them, like uh, Polt and Killer and um, Dongregu, actually, I believe you No, wait, not Dongregu. TSL. There's another really good player I'm, I'm forgetting about right now, but they all used to be TSL and they've all kind of left. And TSL is a little bit devoid of power players right now as a result of that. Uh, Polt, who kind of used to be their best player, um, has now, uh, has in fact switched to Prime. And actually, he was one of the first ones to switch. He switched quite a while ago, I believe. And so, um, you know, I mean, but it's a, you know, it's a team that, uh, you know, it did pretty well in the team league, I think, for a little bit. It just kind of got eaten apart as all these different players joined different teams uh, for various reasons, but ultimately ended up hurting the team a lot, and they ended up doing uh, pretty poorly later as a result of that. Now, I do want to also talk about the uh, the quick GG there from Thorazane. Apparently, Idra isn't the only one who's going to GG early out of a game, as Thorazane just didn't want to deal with that Banshee Maker, I guess. And maybe he was just uh, maybe just assumed that as a TSL Polt would be able to use his Banshee Micro to full effect by being able to, you know, just basically take apart um, pick apart uh, his marines right there that didn't have stim and didn't have combat shields but on the other hand he would have gotten the raven out the raven definitely would have helped in dealing with that you could drop an auto turret as well which can uh, sort of double as a missile turret in early game against those banshees and of course you can drop him completely under the banshee to deal some additional damage as well and he also would have been able to get a viking out pretty soon as well so i think he would have been in okay shape uh, which is why i was so surprised that he ended up gging but he was very much behind that game um, he wasn't he wasn't pulling an Idra by GG when he was ahead or any means by any means. It looks like both players are actually opting for the same wall off right here. Thorazane is opting for the gas as fast expand actually. Um which uh, his the, his wall end is a little bit more common if you're going for a gasless build. Polt looks like is probably going to be aiming for oh that's a little bit of a different wall off now I suppose as the tech lab is going to fit right in there. Um, it's going to be a Reaper expand. Yep, there he goes. And actually he had almost exactly 50 gas when that Reaper landed. So pretty good timing right there on his gas. Polt, of course, a very good pro player is going to have good timings on those sorts of things. Like that SCV is going to change his mind just a little bit about exactly how far it wants to skid at a lot into that base. And Thorazine is going to plop down that command center. I'm not sure how. Oh, SEVs, by the way, carry these huge buildings in their pockets. It's like they just kind of pull out materials to start building things. Um, I don't know if any of you have played like Dawn of War, for example, but like the Terran buildings, the Space Marine buildings, actually drop down from drop pods, and then they start building them from that. They like assemble them, which I think is pretty cool, unique. Um, you know, it's not like the worst thing, obviously. It doesn't really matter uh, that they just pull them out of their pockets. Now, uh, so of course, Thorazine's economy is going to be a little bit ahead, but of course, Polt's gas is going to be a little bit ahead, so his tech's going to be doing a little bit better. Uh, meanwhile, these Reapers are, of course, going to be out early as well, and there aren't really going to be too many Marines to deal with this. Now, these Marines up against the cliff should be able to deal with these Reapers just fine, as long as TSL Polt doesn't go in alone, or as long as he doesn't wait and try to gang up with his Reapers, and is able to save that second Reaper's life. That Reaper probably will not opt in for going in again, unless he's going for a suicide scout mission, probably this direction, if I had to guess. Looks like that command center is going to be done pretty soon. And actually, it looks like Thorzane is going to be opting for at least a biocentric army in the beginning. Not sure if he's going to switch into mech later as... Um, oh, it looks like both players are actually going bio. So it's most likely going to be marine tank, actually, at this point in time. However, I would expect to see a factory coming down from Thorzane pretty soon as he is building up his gas reserves. Nope, he's going for a reactor, actually. Oh, those Reapers! Oh, not quite able to take out that mule. That would have been a huge amount of minerals lost uh, for Thorazine if he was able to take out that mule right now. If we look at workers lost, though, he did it up. Okay, just killed one worker right there, uh, which is the biggest deal in the world. But he did kill a good amount of marines. If you go to unit, total resources lost. Thorazine has lost 250, and Polt has only lost 100, which was that single reaper. Uh, looks like, actually, well, it is going to be a barracks on the way. This barracks is getting a tech lab. That's going to be for stim pack or combat shields, whichever one he opts for first. Looks like another Reaper is actually going to slide on in and possibly finish off that mule. The Marine stops running, however, and chasing down that Reaper. So it looks like that Reaper is going to go home hungry, not able to nom nom up that mule right there. And he should be just fine from that Reaper in the future. Not have to deal with any of those more Reaper shenanigans too much as he should have a decent Marine count out. Now, ooh, I think, yep, that Marine did just finish off that Reaper. Very nice job. From Thorazane, of course, that was Bolt actually really running the Marine, running the Reaper back into his certain death. 
Second gas now on the way for Polt right now. He's actually, he was aiming for a minerals, heavier minerals build. And I think, let's see, so his impact just started. I believe Combat Shields just finished for Polt. So he is going to be ahead in that regard in terms of his uh, upgrades, actually. And that's going to be a pretty big advantage, actually, until, uh, until Thorzen really gets Combat Shields. Ooh. All right, so, ooh. But that hill and those four, that additional marine is going to make that uh, advantage moot as the first shot right there is going to make all of the difference when you have such small numbers of forces. And of course, being on top of the hill means you're going to get first shot against your opponent. So Thorazine will be able to hold that watchtower right there and is opting for a third gas right now, whereas Pult is not quite opted for his third gas. So Pult should be going a little bit more marine heavy. And I would guess that Thorazine is either aiming for a little bit more upgrades or a little bit more siege tanks. Um, possibly Medivacs as well. It depends exactly what we're going to kind of be seeing doing. I would guess that we're going to see Medivacs before Siege Tanks, but I have seen it the other way around. Um, Medivacs would be much more of an offensive unit, and Siege Tanks would be much more of a defensive unit in that regard. Looks like TSL Pult's going to try to move up here. However, Combat Shields is going to finish for Thorzan, and he's going to go ahead and chase away Pult. That was almost perfect timing for his Combat Shield, and nice spread, of course, on the top of the hill for his Marines. Third gas now on the way, uh, well not completed rather for Thorazin. Looks like he is in fact going for Medivacs first, and Polt is going for the same. Of course, Polt is actually done with his starport. Where is it? Oh no, he's not done with the starport. I misread that. Uh, Thorazin is almost done with the starport. Polt is now just getting a reactor for his starport, so he's actually a little bit behind in that regard. Of course, the stim pack is going to be a little bit ahead, but he's probably not going to move out and engage as it can. It's pretty hard even with Stimpak to try to attack up a ramp, uh, basically against anything, but especially against Marine on Marine combat, as Marines just deal so much damage to each other so quickly. Um, that extra damage you take from attacking up a ramp can really be quite devastating, and having to scan is really going to make the combat uh, just a little bit ineffective um, in general, just because if you even if you win the combat just by a little bit, um, the scan is really going to even that one out. Not sure exactly what Polt sees here. It looks like he did in fact scan and saw the barracks going down. Didn't quite see the timing on the medevac, so not sure if he'll be prepared for any drops or anything like that coming down. And it looks like Stimpak will be done for both players by the time drops end up going through, which means that it's going to be on pretty even footing. And look at these mirrored builds right now, as both players are going for basically exactly the same thing. Supply Depot is coming down, and the first siege tank has started. Looks like Thorazane is actually going to be ahead on his siege tank production. Nice marine placement here is going to be able to detect any sort of drops coming through, as well as that uh, sensor tower that's coming out right there. You can, instead of getting a sensor tower, you can also offer a turret ring. It'll probably cost you more minerals, but save you 100 gas. Um, in a marine siege tank battle, gas isn't super, super important though, so I can see doing it either way, of course. Uh, the sensor tower only spots for you, whereas the turret ring actually prevents those drops from going down. So that's the kind of difference in what it provides. And uh, eventually, I can almost I can almost for sure tell you that Thorazin will be opting for um, a turret ring around his base just to make sure that his opponent isn't able to get inside uh, with any sorts of drops. Looks like a little bit of show on muscle right here from Thorazin, putting his fleet in the Pacific Rim on Hawaii just to try to show Japan who's boss. Of course, not really the case. And I'm not saying TSL Polt is from Japan. I'm just making a World War II joke. Okay, calm down. All right, looks like his forces are going to move across here. He's going to take some damage here, but attacking uphill is not going to be something he's going to do. I think actually his marine count is going to be a little bit higher right here. That siege tank is going to help add some additional firepower right now for Polt. Upgrades are going to be a little bit Thorazane's favor right now, and I think Thorazane is actually going to lose this despite his upgrade advantage. Not something I was really expecting right there, as apparently Polt was at a good amount of marines in that, in that engagement, actually. Uh, also took out a siege tank, which is pretty important, as siege tanks are quite expensive. And uh, siege mode was not done right there. If siege mode was done, uh, Thorazane definitely would have been able to hold that engagement. Looks like the siege is, is going to happen. The sound is going to hit us a little bit uh, later, as you can see how accurate this game is, as it actually has the sound hit before the... Or you actually see it before you would hear it, just like in real life. Very impressive from Blizzard. Nice feature to the game. By the way, that's a joke that was lagged. I was doing that just for those of you who would be like, it's, it's clearly the case that it's just lagging. It doesn't actually do that. Um, anyway, Command Center is coming down right now. Additional Marines are being produced right now. Looks like the Siege Chain count is relatively similar. Additional Marines still for Pult. It looks like he's actually going to push out against his opponent right here. I would guess the Siege up right here. Unfortunately, this Siege Tank is in a perfect position to try to defend against this Thursday. It's probably going to want to try to Siege up that tank as well as uh, he doesn't really have any knowledge of exactly where Polt's army is going to be at this point in time, and Polt does have a 12 supply advantage right now. He's also busted his rocks, whereas Polt is currently working on that, or Thorzane, rather, is currently working on that. Actually, looks like Polt is going to go ahead and move up the front 
is stimming some Marines to see if you can see that army. And of course, Thorazain was able to spot that army as well. Looks like a drop is going to come out as Thorazain sees his opponents away from his base. And that's probably not going to be able to really attack up. This attacking the siege tanks tends to be pretty difficult. Looks like that stim Marine is going to take some damage from additional Marine. However, his four Marine buddies are going to be able to chase down that Marine. Not quite uh, from Thorazain right there. Is going to delay taking or busting the rocks just a little bit. Two additional barracks are coming down now for Thorazane. Going over to the production tab. All right, so we see that Polt is actually still behind on upgrades and is actually going to be behind um, a little bit more as 2 2 is on the way for Thorazane right now. Now, those siege tanks are going to deal a decent good amount of damage right now. However, this, this siege tank is going to be able to target tower down that siege tank from behind. So, Thorazane should be in a pretty good position to hold this. He did take out the gas. He's probably going to take out that supply depot as well. Uh, but probably won't be able to push too much farther forward into this base. Thorazane is going to try to want to get additional siege tank up here at parallel lengths to this siege tank. Um, however, it's a very tight window from where you can put that. Probably right about there uh, would be a good spot. Um, it looks like Thorazane's not going to opt for that, and probably Polt isn't going to push it, as you can push three siege tanks together and take some damage from the opposing siege tank. Oh, looks like, is he going to slide him forward? Um, oh, Scan comes down at exactly the right time for Thorazane, who is in fact aiming at his opponent, and is he going to be able to target down, takes out the siege tank before he can take out the opposing siege tank. That's why I was saying you needed the secondary siege tank right there to really prevent your opponent from doing that as you can bring two siege tanks that watch into range of your opponent. The two Vikings are going to be able to take out two medevacs. Very nice job from TSL Polt. Also taking away the gas production from your opponent. Always something you're going to want to try to do. Unfortunately for Polt, the big engagement doesn't happen soon as the opponent's going to be up 1-1 as well as the Vikings taking out his opponent's Vikings. Scan is going to prevent those siege tanks from being able to really get into position. However, Polt will not be able to continuously scan. So at some point, Polt is probably going to want to go ahead and back behind this, uh, back on behind this base. Looks like, yep. One, two siege tanks barely in range, able to take out one of the, the that injured siege tank. Looks like a little bit of battle for the watchtower also over here as that little marine splattered, or possibly I think that was an SCV actually splattered across uh, the uh, the grass, I guess. Looks like Polt is just going to hang in position. This huge amount of reinforcements are on the way though. Oh, I did not watch the drop. I apologize for that. Drop did not kill too many workers, so it didn't do too much damage. Looks like the siege tanks are going to go ahead and take those down. Uh, Holds, actually, Thorazane's secondary tank did not quite in range of that previous tank. It looks like those siege tanks are going to be able to move up and take a pretty good position right here. Scan's going to have to come down from Pole to be able to spot the high ground. Marines are going to be moving in against Marines right here. However, 2-2 is done for Thorazane, but a much better concave for Pole is going to possibly make that irrelevant right now as these Marines are bouncing on behind each other, being taken out single follow from the siege. siege tanks are going to scare away those Marines. And the Vikings are just going to have to hang out right here. And the siege tanks are going to beat up these siege tanks right here. As neither player really able to, um, neither, well, sorry, so neither player able to take a decisive advantage as Thorazade isn't up on upgrades right now. He's actually opting for armor first, which is kind of interesting, possibly to try to get the, well, he has siege tanks in there. That's not a very good idea. He does not want to put siege tanks inside of there. Looks like, oh, maybe he's trying to drop the siege tanks right next to those opposing siege tanks. If he drops them right here, they can actually single fire, and then he can just pick them up with the medevac right away. That's exactly what he's going to do. Very nice job being able to pick up at least one siege tank. However, the medevacs are going to be in range of that siege tank right there. So he's going to go ahead and have to withdraw out of there. Two additional Vikings now coming down. Four poles are going to deal some additional damage. 3-3 three, three now on the way for Thorazane. It's going to be just a little bit ahead of TSL Pulse in terms of upgrades. They are both at 2-2 two, two right now. So on an even footing in that regard, those Marines are going to still try to take out that Viking. Not quite able to take it out as two additional Vikings are now on the way from Thorazane. It's like Vikings. I don't even know what to call it. Viking exchange. Yeah, the Viking stock exchange right there is going to keep trading buy high and sell low. No way, it's the opposite of that. That explains why it never did particularly well in the stock market. The Marines are going to go ahead and stim up. However, the siege of the siege tanks is going to scare them away. They're going to again, run on back. Going back home, boy. And unfortunately, my hard drive filled up, so uh, I did revert just a little bit. Sorry for the brief cutoff there as I did have to uh, start putting some things on my external hard drive to kind of bounce it out. But we're back at the game, back action, and of course for you, no time has passed at all. How amazing. So Thorazane's going to really need to try to find a way out to climb on out of this. Looks like he's going to send some Marines forward. Those Marines are going to get blasted apart. Goodbye, Marines. Poor little guys. They did take a siege tank, though. Siege tank for about nine Marines is not too bad uh, for Thorazane there. Um, but he's uh, really kind of climbing out of a hole right here. Well, tons of scans going down, but constantly everybody's scanning everything. No mules for either player, really. 
uh, going down. Actually, uh, Thorazane's been supply blocked at 177 for a very long time right now. Not really able to produce anything except for those things that die. And he's really going to want to. I'm kind of curious how queued up he is right now. He's actually not that queued up. Uh, but he really wants to try to get some supply defense. That looks like a small attack from TSL Pult is going to go ahead and go across and take out one barracks. Not quite able to take out that barracks, actually. Some additional Marines are going to get chased down right there. Um, and actually, those Marines are going to rock the wrong way. Goodbye, Marines. They decided to take the scenic road and they paid for it with their lives, poor little guys. Looks like this uh, orbital command is now under fire from a very nice positioning from TSO Bold right here as he's got the siege takes in like a perfect concave around the orbital command. Orbital command is going to have to lift out out of there as really there's not really much of a way to engage them, just Marines, which is what exactly what Thorazane has at this point in time. Vikings, looks like TSL Pult's Viking is going to be able to get some target practice against that orbital command. Of course, it's quite easy to hit an orbital command especially if you're a Viking driver. Now, don't get confused when I say Viking. I know this may confuse many of you guys, but I am actually talking about the Viking as in the ship and not uh, the race of people that lived in Norway, Finland, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Sweden, uh, Denmark, and Russia, actually. Oh, and fun fact for those of you who don't know, the word Russia... Uh, for the country is actually named after Vikings who lived in Russia who are called the Rus. Those Marines tried to stem forward to take out some Vikings. Not a very good idea on their part as they paid for with some damage from that siege tank. Siege tank now at four kills right here. Additional SCVs are now going down here. It looks like he's going to try to sneak an Orca Man to the bottom. If that gets spotted though, it's going to be very easy for TSL Pult to pick that up. It could be very bad for TSL Thor or for Maus Thorizade in this particular engagement. Man, that's a lot of siege tanks. Right, let's look at the siege tank count right now. He's up, he's up nine siege tanks, and he's up marines. Or so Polt is up nine siege tanks. His opponent is up marines, though. He's up 15 marines, which is not nearly comparable at all to that sort of situation. Especially if Polt decides to scan here. Ooh, he sees the SUVs. Is he gonna notice? Looks like he's gonna run forward and go across these siege tanks. Siege tanks are left naked, which means he's able to pick them apart. Goodbye. Sensor tower is going to go down as well, which is a very good idea. How unfortunately, these siege tanks were left uh, completely unguarded. So they're they're going to be taken out as well. SCVs are going to want to transfer almost immediately before they get taken out. The SCVs are actually returning resources the other way, so Polt uh, should know exactly where his opponent's other orbital command is. All these SCVs are dying right now. The supply of Mouse Thorazane is dropping right now. He's down 67 supply at this particular point in time. He does have a fourth base up. Polt has a fourth base up. Uh, Thorazane is trying to retake his third right now and has, of course, had this hidden base right here, which has been spotted by this Marine. This orbital command is going ahead and slide even farther east, though, uh, just to try to stay out of range. These siege tanks are still out, and this nice one Banshee is going to be able to pick off a number of the siege tanks right there. Marines are going to be able to focus down on the orbital, though, and Thorazane is really having a hard time winning this game right here. Even the Banshee gets picked off, and Thorazane is just going to have to GG out of this game. Now, I do not fault him for, fault, er, for GGing out of this game, as he has less than half the harvesters, less than half of the supply, and less than half of the bases, actually, so he's on one base, really, and I guess he's sort of taking a second base right here, where his opponent is on, I mean, mining bases, I guess it's just three, or I guess it's just two, two to one, or two to none, I guess, however you want to look at it, but very nice contain from Pult, as he was able to basically slowly strangle his opponent to death with those siege tanks right there, and, uh, oh, that one drop from Thorazane, actually, I am going to go back to it, uh, is that 15... Um, so I did apologize for missing that, but it looks like we should be able to see it. I guess it won't let me go to 15, just 14. So, alright. Alright, so these Marines are going to stim, drop outside, go ahead and stim, and run on up. Order command's going to be cancelled, it's actually going to be lifted. Not quite sure why that happened. Uh, as those are Marines and they can't target the air. Uh, but it looks like that drop was cleaned up pretty quickly and that uh, is why Thorazane ended up being a little bit behind on supply as a result of that drop. Um, and then that was at the same time that these were going on. So, we're, oops, my bad. Alright, well we're going to move on to game number 5 anyway. So it's PGL Milkcraft setting off. Game number 3, sorry, not 5. I don't know what I was thinking. 